because you uh, you come out on the winning side, and winning's not easy in baseball. And um, what we did today offensively was very impressive. I mean, it's just it's not easy, you know, hitting a baseball, and and, uh, and it made up for some of our deficiencies, especially in game two, where we just even in game one a little bit we weren't executing. Game two, we weren't playing great defense. Um, but there's something to be said about a team that can put up a crooked number. And, and uh, if anything, we're learning about the highs and lows of the game, and we're learning nothing you could do about the bad inning. You just you can run in and compete. And um, so we did some good things today. A lot of good things offensively, but there's areas we got to improve in. Hitting does become contagious. I mean, did you feel like that? And it kind of started a little bit last night, I think. No doubt. Last night, the best game we play all year. Um, and probably that big offensive inning gave us, you know, Tuesday night, you know, we score what three in the in the ninth and have the walk off, and then last night we put together a big inning. Um, so it's nice to know that you have the the capabilities. It's it does a lot for your offense that confidence guys have. Um, but clearly, you know, we just we got to play better. We just didn't execute great in game two. I know it's a long day, but it's a beautiful day and it's early in the season and. You know, we obviously would have liked to have played cleaner in game two. You mentioned last night that, you know, Saturday really hasn't been your guys' day offensively. Um, obviously, they responded to your message. Yeah, the message was about we got to come out with the same edge that we, we seem to come out on Friday night with. And uh, we definitely had it today. And, um, again, didn't didn't play great. But, you know, I just I know how hard winning is, and I don't ever want to take it for granted. But... I always say winning will mask deficiencies. So you still have to address areas where we're not playing at the highest level. And and it's a smart group and they're trying, you know, but, but you still got to be able to do, you got to be professional and mature enough to play with that consistent level of baseball that's needed if you're going to be good or great. Logan, you've talked about him in the preseason one of, being one of those guys that'll take that jump and I think you're, we're seeing it now, aren't we? No doubt. Uh, we've talked a lot about Beard, Benson, and Humphrey, you know, that they really had a blue collar mentality last year and they just put their head down and worked and they gained a lot of respect from the older players. So that said a lot to me when older players were you know, realizing, hey, these guys got a chance to be really good. And they just seem like guys that will run through a wall for this program. They're not finished products. They got to keep getting better. And, and uh, but the more they play, you know, the more they'll learn and, and they'll be able to adapt. And, and we need them. You know, I, I, I talk a lot about that sophomore group with Peyton, Napchik, and those three. You know, that's five sophomores that, um, have an opportunity to have a special year because you got enough experience because you've been around long enough, but you don't have to deal with the draft and some of the some of the external factors that that make it tough on you at times. And and so sophomore year should be sometimes the most enjoyable. Do you expect that power? That, I mean, two home runs here from him. I mean, is he a guy that that can do that? It's a physical, you know, it, it's a physical hitter. Um, and we've put some physical hitters in that second base spot. You know, I think you look at Cooper Bowman last year, I mean, it was a physical second baseman. So Logan spent a lot of time with him over there, worked extremely hard on his defense, uh, but he's strong. I mean, the one thing about these sophomores, uh, these three in particular, they, they love the weight room. You know, I kind of, I call them meatheads uh, in, in a complimentary way, but they work extremely hard on just being as strong and as physical and as athletic as they can be. So um, they, they got bright futures. We just gotta we just gotta keep getting better. 42 runs, I think it was 36 hits, nine home runs, but it wasn't all just the starters. I mean, we saw some of the guys coming off the bench that really speaks to the depth of this team. It's, I mean, I think I hit it in the opening day press conference. We talk a lot about the depth of the pitching staff, um, but we feel like we have that offensively too. And we got a couple guys on the DL and was unfortunate with Willie Cook. I thought he was a super talented freshman that was going to get a chance to play this year um, based on what he did in the fall. And, um, you know, just guys got to step up. You got to take advantage of the opportunities you have. And, and we work extremely hard with all of them. They all work extremely hard. They're ready. They're ready to step up and, and contribute. So I love seeing guys come off the bench ready to have good at-bats or play good defense or run the bases. TCU coming in next, is it kind of 
build up the energy maybe a little bit more, get more of a, a name opponent? No, I, I mean, no doubt. It's uh, it's a big week. I mean, TCU and Michigan, yeah. and you got teams that have, have been in Omaha and, and um, have had a lot of success and, and great traditions. So um, I think, you know, probably more so for the kids than me. I just, I know I respect the game and everybody that we play, but hopefully, you know, I think for the fans and, um, anytime you play really good competition, teams that we faced before in Omaha or, or Michigan in a regional, um, it, it definitely makes it makes it exciting. Great. Appreciate it, Dan.